Okay, welcome to Triangle Fundamentals. In this lesson, we're going to be going over uh, triangle properties, and these are the basic properties that are true of all triangles, uh, even you know the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90, those, uh, those special triangles. We're going to save those for another lesson. But today, let's just go get into the basics. So the first thing you should know, the three basic types of triangles, and I have them right here. In a scalene triangle, none of the angles are equal. So this one is different from that one, is different from that one. So if none of the angles are equal, none of the sides are equal. Isosceles triangle, that means two of the angles are equal. And if two of the angles are equal, two of the sides are equal. Finally, equilateral triangle, and you, I'm sure you guys have heard this before. All the angles are equal, equilateral, right? So if all the angles are equal, all the sides are equal, kind of a special triangle there. And now let me ask you this, what is the degree measure of each of these angles? Well, we know a triangle has 180 degrees, so each one is 60 degrees. Okay. So another property of triangles that you should know, I have it on the bottom here, equal angles have equal opposite sides. So let's show you some examples. So if equal angles have equal opposite sides, if I tell you this angle is equal to that angle, their opposite sides are also equal. And similarly, if I tell you, well, let's say this side is equal to this side, their opposite angles are equal. So that angle is equal to that angle. So a way on, on the SAT that they might test you with this, and I've seen this on questions before, where maybe they'll tell you that this is 4, and this is 4, and this is X, and this is Y, and there's probably some other information, but the, the main thing that you need to get out of this, what can you say about X and Y? You can say that X equals Y. You know what they might do? They might give you, they might tell you that this was like 40 degrees, and they'd, have, and they'd ask you to find X. Well, you should just know that since the, these are equal because their opposite sides are equal. So then you could solve for X or Y or whatever they would ask for on the test. Okay. Another property you should know, larger sides are opposite larger angles. So let's say I gave you this triangle right here and I told you that X was greater than Y and that's greater than Z. So X is the biggest, then Y is the biggest, then Z. So if X is the biggest, that's the biggest side. We'll, do, we'll, we'll put three uh, lines to make it the biggest side. Y is the second biggest one. So that's the second biggest side, and Z is the smallest, so that's your smallest side. Another way to think about this, I remember in, uh, I don't know, I was, I was teaching someone a lot younger, I think it was, uh, you know, second or third grade, or whenever you learn about angles, uh, you know, imagine the crocodile, right? Or the alligator. The alligator's mouth, when he opens his mouth, you know, you get some, you get some side over here, right? But as the alligator opens his mouth really, really wide, what happens? that distance gets larger, right? Now let's say the alligator really wants to eat some something big, really, really wide, right? What happens? The side keeps getting bigger. So that's kind of, you know, a cute way of, of thinking about angles. Just remember, you know, the, al the, the, bigger, <laughs> the bigger the alligator opens its mouth, the longer the side opposite is going to be. Kind of the same thing with angles here. Okay. Uh, triangle inequality theorem. If you take anything out of this lesson today, this will probably be the most helpful because I've seen plenty of SAT questions asking about this. Um, and where does the triangle inequality theorem come from? It's kind of a, you know, a, a fancy name. Uh, and, and it comes from this guy Euclid, and I was, I was doing a little research on it. You know, he's an ancient Greek, uh, 300 years before Christ. And this is what Euclid said. If you have some point A and some point B, let's say we, we take a length of rope and we go from A to B. So that length of rope will be a straight line, right? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So we go from there to there, it's a straight line. Let's say I take another length of rope, and I stretch it from point A to point C, and now I go from point C to point B. It makes sense that this length of rope has to be longer than A to B, right? We took a detour. We went from A to C and then C to B. So what he's saying is that any side of a triangle, because now we made a triangle because of all these ropes, any side of a triangle has to be less than the sum of the other two sides, right? Because it doesn't make sense. How could this distance from here to here and then from here to here be less than that straight line? 
Doesn't make sense, right? So what the try so just to summarize, and this is I'm gonna write it down for you so that's helpful on test day. What you should remember is that any missing side of a triangle of a triangle will be so here's the two points you want to remember less than the sum and greater than the difference of the other two sides So let me say that again. Any missing side of a triangle will be less than the sum and greater than the difference of the other two sides. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say I had a triangle and I told you that in this triangle this was 5 and this was 3. And I asked you, what are the possible values that x could be? Well, you know this missing side, right, less than the sum. So x is going to be less than 8, right? less than the sum of the other two sides and it's going to be greater than two greater than the difference so real quick why don't you guys tell me if I have some value y and this is 10 and this is 18 what values can y be? I'll give you a second alright y should be less than 28 less than the sum and greater than 8. So that's your range of possible values for y. This is a great theorem to, to know. I've seen it tested numerous times on the SAT, so just you can say it five times in your head. Less than the sum, greater than the difference. Less than the sum, greater than the difference. Memorize that, you'll get those questions right. Okay, I want to go into kind of what we're going to wrap up with. Um, we're going to talk about, and let me just set this up here, some other properties, uh, things I think you've all known, just to go over here. All right, we should all know. Let me set that up. There we go. Uh, triangle has 180 degrees, right? And we know the area is one half base times height. So another way to think about that, if you ever forget, just picture a square. Well, a square, let's say it has dimensions B and H, base and height. Well, the area of a square is just base times height, right? Or length times width. But I'm using B and H in this case. Now, if I split that square in half, along the diagonal, what do I get? What's the area of this shape right here? It's going to be one half base times height. It's just half the area of the square. So if you ever forget the area of a triangle, that's one way to remember. Nice little, I don't know, different way to think about it. Okay, when you're figuring out the area of a triangle, you need to know the height, right? Because what do we just say? area equals one half base times height. Usually the height is the harder one to, to identify. So when you're doing a uh, triangle question, you need the height. Now I have two triangles here, there is no height. The height has to form a 90 degree angle with the longest side, or the base. Okay, so you might want to draw a height like that. Another way to do it, you could do it from the outside like this, which might be a little more complicated because now you have two missing sides, right? Whereas here you just had one. But in this case, this was your height, and now this is your height. Okay? So actually, let me, let me rephrase that. The height just has to form a, a 90 degree angle. Okay? So that's another way, another way to do it. Lastly, when you're thinking about um, special right triangles, and those are those 45, 45, 90s, what's convenient is that, well, what's already there? The 90 degrees is already there, so you know this is going to be your base, and this is going to be your height. So I'm going to stop there, and uh, this is going to be a good segue into uh, special right triangles when we start talking about the, uh, the 30, 60, 90. So I'll put special right triangles here, or special rights triangles, you know what I'm saying. So that's the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. So stick around for another lesson. I'm going to go over those triangles in the next one. I'll see you there.